welcome if this is your first time. My name is Sarah. I am an expat. I am German, currently live in Sweden, but have spent uh, the majority of my life actually living in different places. And I am here to share all things related, living abroad, traveling abroad, things you need to pay attention to, tips and tricks that I've learned over my various visits abroad or my various stays abroad in case you either want to move abroad as an expat, meaning, you know, for a longer time, in case you want to go um, and travel, or if you decide to become a digital nomad, a digi nomad, um, many of these tips also relate to you. Today, let's talk about accommodation. I think this is something that is a really big scare factor and pain point for a lot of people. At least it was for me when I'm when I, you know, first moved abroad, particularly because oftentimes you're gonna have to take care of uh, accommodation, sort out accommodation before you even move abroad. Um, so that's a very vulnerable, vulnerable situation and for many people that is surely related with a lot of anxiety. Also, I feel that when you decide to travel abroad, when you decide to travel for a longer time period, uh, maybe you want to, you know, travel the world for a while, um, you want to embrace the nomadic lifestyle, you want to become a digital nomad, accommodation, safe accommodation particularly, is your biggest financial pain point. I mean, that's, the, that's where probably the majority of your budget is going to. So to Today I want to talk about a few options here, both in terms of how to find cheap accommodation, how to find free accommodation, and I will also give you a few tips of what to pay attention to when deciding or when considering whether or not to stay at a certain place, and I'll share my personal um, little horror story with you when it comes to that. So personally, I have actually tried a few different ways of living abroad, depending on my budget, my age and where I lived. Um, I've been living abroad as an intern in places where I got accommodation through the internship. I studied hotel management way back when. And oftentimes when you work in the hotel industry abroad, you will receive bed and board, which is also a great tip if you decide you would like to travel um, for a certain amount of time or test visit a country or live, it, live in a country for a shorter amount of time. Um, hotels are great ways to experience a country, earn a little bit of money and get cheap accommodation. But of course it's, you know, working in the hotel industry is it's it's hard work but i know that a lot of people who travel the world for um years actually this is one of the jobs nowadays of course you do a, a lot of people do digi nomading uh, but um another option is to find um jobs in the hotel industry so like i said i've been working in hotels and there it oftentimes is so that you get accommodation of course not in the hotel don't start dreaming about fancy hotel rooms but they often have employee apartments where they put all their employees and of that is you don't have to pay for it you already live with a lot of people that you are working with so you make a lot of connections immediately you won't feel lonely negative time of uh, negative side effect of that is for example i worked in brussels in a hotel and shared my apartment first of all was shared rooms and shared apartment and um, hotel work is shift work so oftentimes i um, for example the the cooks with whom we lived, they would work until deep into the night, then they would come home, wind down, maybe party a little bit. I would have the morning shift, I would have to be at work at five o'clock, so it's not the most restful way to sleep or to live, and you you know, you know lack a lot of privacy, but it is cheap. That also moves um, us directly into the topic of shared apartments. Another way to save a lot of money, of course, on an apartment is to find a housemate, a roommate. Like I said, I've done that in Brussels. When I moved to the US as a student, I moved with other students from my university. So we already knew who we would be living with before we moved there so we were a couple of students we decided already before moving there that we were going to live together and split a house again reducing our house or our rent costs and um you know giving the security of we all knew each other we knew who we were you know going to be living with generally i think that having housemates personally i like to have my own room i like to be i'm an introvert i like to close the door behind myself and have my peace and quiet but having housemates i think is always a really nice idea unless you you know you move with a family or you are above a certain age and you really can also afford your own your own apartment but generally i think having housemates is a really nice way if you come to a new country to not feel so alone and you know you might not know anybody and then you at least have some form of social social crew already around you if you move as a student dormitories are of course student dormitories are of course another option now depending on where you move 
to or from, they might look a little different. I know that when we moved to um, the US, we were quite shocked that in the US dormitories actually mean that you say, share a room because at least the places that I've been in Europe, you do not share a room. You There might be dormitories, but dormitories usually means student apartments or bigger dormitories, but everybody has their own room. So. So let's call this category long-term accommodation, meaning renting either a flat or a studio apartment by yourself, renting a house by yourself, living with flatmates, either whom you know beforehand and move together, or finding a room in a flat in the place that you would like to live in. So let's categorize these as a long-term accommodation. Where do you find these? If you are a student, the easiest, most secure way and the way where you will get the most support is to go through the university, through the international office of the university. They often have a list either with dormitories. Oftentimes it is so that students who come from abroad will be prioritized a little bit when it comes to student housing, of course, because they have a harder time finding accommodation otherwise. Um, but universities will often have also lists of, of other other accommodations that they tend to work with and that they know are in a secure area that they are you know somewhat within student budget so if you're a student my best tip for you is to go to through the university international office otherwise if you are looking for flatmates roommates housemates mates houses to rent stuff like that um one big place that is quite international is always Craigslist or Gumtree. Um, that is how I found my flat in London where I lived for a while. Um, I shared it with a very nice Taiwanese girl and that was really, it was a smack down in town. It was a very small room, but it was nice having somebody who already knew the the city and who introduced me to her friends and you know I didn't feel lonely it was it was a good time or um, depending on where you move there might be local sites that you could check problem with local sites oftentimes is that you will need to be able to speak the local language when it comes to when it comes to renting a place abroad be it a whole flat be it a room be it you know any form of um, accommodation of course you need to be careful this is perfect breeding ground for scammers now i don't want to i don't want to scare you there's a lot of good and nice people uh, everywhere in the world as well but i just want you to be aware um, and be cautious meaning this it's a very common scam to for example you know rent out a room and then take the money but don't you know the room is doesn't exist is not available whatsoever so try to be cautious try to get personal details try to you know don't don't pay the entire don't pay the entire rent um, beforehand maybe just pay a pay a deposit um, always 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 have within your budget that you in case of emergency if you arrive and you realize I can't live here I don't feel safe here safety is your first priority there's no point in moving abroad traveling the world whatever it is that you want to do and jeopardizing your safety particularly because you are somewhere where you don't have your immediate social career social system people that can support you around you when you are new to a new place so please please when you travel always budget for you know a certain emergency budget that you could leave if you had to so safety first if you don't feel safe in the area, if you don't feel safe with the people that um, are renting out the room, then leave. And again, if it feels scammy, don't do it. Another option, if you trigger a little, if this triggers a little bit of anxiety in you and you don't want to go this route, is to go find short-term accommodation first. And once you've found short-term accommodation, you can then, once you are in that place that you wish to live, from there start looking for longer term accommodation and um, thereby ensuring that you get to actually look at what you're renting before you're doing so. We'll talk about that when we talk about short term accommodation in a minute. Let me just point out some things that you should um, pay attention to when picking a long term place to live. Number one to me, like I said already, is how to feel secure. Um, so I said I'll, I'll share a little bit of a story of mine. Um, you need to feel secure with in the place that you live in and with the play people that you live with should you decide to share your your flat your accommodation so i'll share two stories um, that both of them were situations where i did not feel very safe both of them um, this is no reflection of the security of finland as a country or helsinki as a city but both of them happened to me in helsinki um, when i moved to helsinki uh, i ended up living there for five years um, i moved to helsinki for an internship and then a job and i was looking for a flat i had a very tight budget so i decided so i decided to rent a room like i said i had a very tight budget so i was looking in the maybe not so nice 
part of town. Helsinki is very, very expensive. It's looking um, in a part of town that was called Kuntola. And um, I arrived at this apartment. It was a couple that was renting out a room. And already when I was arriving, um, I got a very weird vibe from them so what was what was happening uh, first actually what they were doing was they were renting out their bedroom um, to themselves live in the living room to which i would have no access i understand if you live in the living room you sleep in the living room fine that's your private area um, and they were renting out the bedroom the bedroom was in dire need of renovation it stains on the wall it looked like somebody had either thrown something against the wall a beverage or maybe even vomited against the wall i don't know um, uh, so they were renting out that room, um, but that room had a closet in it, of course, to put to put clothes. And um, they said that they would have to have access to that room because they were gonna keep their clothes in that closet. So my first, um, you know, off feeling was okay. If I'm renting this room, this is my, you know, I if I'm paying for this room, I want the privacy to not have people walk in there whenever they want to have something, whenever they need something. Number two was the bathroom. I was told that the I was not allowed to completely close the door to the bathroom because they had a cat who had its cat, cat litter cat toilet um, in the bathroom and therefore had to be able to enter the bathroom at all times now i'm not particularly prude i suppose but being able to close the bathroom when you live with people you don't know is a big one on my list of feeling secure so that was that was the second one that i felt like oh, okay this is not this is not gonna work um the house and the apartment were super dirty and super disorganized and then the biggest the biggest one the biggest alarm bell if those two hadn't been hadn't been um you know big alarm bells already was on top of that that both of them midday reeked extremely of alcohol so yeah i ended up not taking that apartment i was quite desperate to find something but you know like i said security first and have a budget have a little buffer so that you don't do not that you're not forced to live in a situation like that. I would have not been able to sleep a single minute in that place and I'm so glad that I had the possibility to go and live in a hostel instead for a while. Um, second thing that I think is really important when um, moving somewhere and looking for a long-term accommodation or a longer-term accommodation is location. Both of course um, in terms of security which I've already talked about. Um, security also means you know how far, how safe would you feel walking, walking home, walking from public transport home or whatever you know walking the entire way check out um, research the area you're gonna live in um, and maybe if you can get in contact with some locals ask them about areas where you're not supposed to live so you know you don't nothing happens to you on your way home if you're alone public transport also means for me how conveniently can you get to and from where you live and to and from where you want to go for example london like most ex uh, metropoles london is an extremely si ex expensive city um, and of course the further out you move the less expensive the accommodation gets now i um, was staying in london for half a year i was working and i wanted to have the possibility to see some of the town um, my thought was okay if i have to travel to and from work for an hour or two um, each way then there's really not much left of my day that I could use to actually, you know, do anything else than go to and from work. Which is why I then um, at that point made the decision to rather pay a little bit extra, but live um, in, in London itself, in um, Notting Hill, um, so that I could A, walk to work, save um, a lot of costs on transport, and so that I, you know, would have time before and after work to actually experience the city. So consider what would be your travel costs, if you, depending on where you move and depending on where you want to go. What are your commuter costs, your travel costs, and what is your cost in sense of in terms of time? Because I mean, you're moving abroad mostly because um, maybe you're moving abroad because you actually would like to experience the place that you're living in. If you spend most of the time in commute, then that's not happening. The downside of that decision that I made um, was that, of course, by paying extra on rent to be smack down in town, I did not have that much money left to spend in town. <laughs> So it's a it's a give and take, you know. Sometimes I thought like I wish I had more I had more money to actually spend in town because now I had the possibility to walk around in town, but I couldn't do that much in town because all my money went to rent. Um, but even in places like that, there is inexpensive options to 
buy food, to experience things, to visit museums. So for me, that was the right decision um, that I felt the most, that I felt I would get the most out of my stay in London from. Okay, so let's talk about short-term accommodation, be that because you are traveling short-term, because you're traveling long-term, wanting to live a rather nomadic lifestyle, be that as a digital nomad, or, you know, just generally somebody who would like to spend a couple of years of their life traveling a little bit from, from country to country, or because you would you would um, prefer to arrive at your long-term destination first, get a feel for it, get a look around and personally inspect the places to that you would then rent for long-term accommodation. So first let's talk about the typical obvious ones and then let's talk about some what, some that you might not know about that are either very inexpensive or maybe even free, um, which enables people to travel the world and to have a travel lifestyle for actually a lot less than most people might think. Traveling the world or living abroad does not have to be expensive and therefore is available to almost everyone, I would say. So the obvious ones would, of course, be, I suppose, hotels and Airbnbs. So hotels, I suppose, benefits of hotels, of course, you know, you everybody, it's a hotel. Everybody cleans for you, takes care of you, you know, it's secure, you have staff that will help you out with things. Downside, of course, they are expensive. Another option is, of course, short or long-term rental of somebody's home. Um, personally, I really like that as an option because it gives you more of a feel for it's not as sterile as a hotel is because it gives you more of a feel for how people actually live in that country um, and therefore you know brings you a little closer to the to the culture airbnb uh, airbnb um, viator um, which is a company by tripadvisor i'll link them down below um, have really beautiful options there and benefit of those that maybe people might not be aware of you can oftentimes also rent them for a longer time period if they are maybe not in the high season but in the low season you might be able to rent these kind of accommodations for a longer time period than just a week or two and be able to negotiate a better price with the owner of that place um, so you might actually um, even through that those kind of sites stumble over um, some form of long term accommodation um, another one that can't be missing on the list of course is hostels now i know hostels you know people go like oh hostels uh dormitories a lot of uh, dirty and um but honestly first of all hostels are inexpensive and they've come a long way so i've stayed i've stayed in a lot of hostels actually um when i was a student first of all i didn't have the budget for anything but a hostel but also i really enjoyed staying in hostels because of the community both vacation rentals and hostels in my opinion are also a great option if you travel with kids because if you travel in ki with kids in hotels i have small kids i think it's a pain you know they don't sleep through the night and they might make something dirty something might break they might have a tantrum in the middle of the night or five o'clock in the morning hostels are not, uh, hotels are not the most child friendly places even in hostels these days you can easily find hostels with private rooms and ensuite bathrooms and it also gives you the opportunity to cook which a is great if you have kids because if you have kids like mine that you know are quite picky or at least one of them is then fancy restaurants are out of the question plus the if you've ever been to a restaurant with a kid you know that that's not the most stress-free experience that you can have um, so you can cook and it's of course a lot more, more budget friendly if you are able to prepare you can save a lot of money if you are able to prepare your own food so hostels are super duper and hostels are of course are also a great place if you wish to make some money while traveling. I was living in a hostel in New York once, for example, who had a lot of backpackers, um, they were from Australia in that case, um, who got to stay there for free in exchange for, you know, taking care of the hostel. So they would run a few hours reception work, they would um, fix things that needed fixing and um, got to stay for free. So there you go, free accommodation and um, a chance to travel the world without having to pay for that. If you want to pick a hostel, I recommend um, going through a hostel booking site I'll link one below um, so you can compare different hostels like basically like you know booking.com or whatever for hotels but just for hostels another great option that is actually for free is either house sitting or house exchange so house sitting is great because you get to live in somebody's house that person or those people might have to travel or stay somewhere else for a while themselves and they wish for somebody to be in their house and take care of their house these this is usually free sometimes you even get paid a little for doing so but it comes with a lot of responsibility maybe they have pets that need taken care of um, maybe there's certain things in the house that need taken care of it is a great option and of course you know living in somebody's apartment slash house is um, a certain 
luxury i suppose that you could maybe otherwise not afford but this is people's whole life that you're taking care of so don't take this um don't take this lightly i'll link your website down below where you can get into house sitting there's a couple actually i'll i'll Pick them, I'm fine, I'll find them out and link them for you. Um, usually what you'll have to do is you will have to create a profile. You will of course have to leave your, your details um, so that you know people know that you are trustworthy and you will oftentimes, they will ask for references. Now, if you're getting started with house sitting, I understand you can't have re references for something you haven't done yet. Um, maybe consider house sitting for a friend for a while in exchange for a reference that way, but take it serious. That way you can get you know the practice um, of it and they can give you a reference in return um, do that once or twice maybe three times so you have a couple of references and then move on to house sitting house exchange also link a website down below um, is what it calls it if you've seen the there was a movie what was it called something something with Christmas with Jude Law um, and Cameron Diaz um, it is exactly like in the movie so you have a house somewhere you have a, an apartment somewhere and you would wish to stay somewhere else and you offer your apartment or house in exchange for somebody else's so you switch houses same thing of course um, ident identification details um, you need to you need to be able to trust each other so before we talk about the last few um, accommodation suggestions that I have that are actually completely for free and oftentimes come with great local insight um, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like my content about living abroad traveling abroad tips for people living and traveling abroad please, so, uh, subscribe to my channel and click the little notification bell that way you will be notified when i put up new content i'll do so between one and once and twice every week and let me know in the comments which is your preferred style of accommodation so last but not least um completely free like house switching as well i suppose but completely free kind of no ties attached almost too good to be true but really a thing couch surfing there's different there's different platforms by now back when i started and when i did it there was only couch surfing um, meaning um that somebody offers you their couch their their air mattress um maybe even a little room and usually these are people they have to have traveled a lot themselves um you can stay there for free they host you as their guest oftentimes they'll show you a little bit around their town they'll let you know a few things and of course you know i mean this is not a long-term solution this is maybe for a night or two so now the big question is that safe oh my god sleeping at somebody's place that you don't that you don't know well um couch surfing is a really really by now established platform where you have to put your you have to put your details you have to put your you have to make a you have to make an account of course personally i particularly as a woman i prefer to stay with other i have preferred when i did it back in the day i've always preferred to stay with other women i felt safer, safer with other women um, although i'm not saying i'm not saying that you know it's just just my personal preference i would only stay with people that had ratings or um comments from other people that had already stayed there to make sure that this is somebody and um you can usually be you can be verified by couch surfing so that everybody knows that they're that that they're, that that person that host is secure so basically like i said before already when it came to renting an apartment with somebody or sharing an apartment with somebody only do it if you feel safe do your research first check how you feel about that person check what other people say about that person and only do it if you have an okay feeling for it no free night is worth actually then ending up with a sleepless night because you feel insecure and again have an emergency buffer if you realize like yeah i i no way i can stay here um but generally i think it's a brilliant way to do because those people like i said they will you will they usually these are travelers these are people that are open and that they want to share their life their their culture with other people so they will actually go through the effort to show you how they live how you know the best places the the non the the, the local secrets to their place um and stuff like that and of course in exchange you should show interest in that and you i mean you're somebody's guest they're letting you sleep for free in their house so show show adequate house manners um, another option is on facebook there's a group for 
women in particular there's a group called host a sister so there women can host other women which is also an option but there it's not ver verified through any uh, through any umbrella organization and last but not least a great way to um, stay somewhere for free as in to not pay for accommodation um, this is more for um, people who want to travel the world is volunteering i myself have never volunteered but i knew a girl in high school excuse me, in high school, who volunteered on an orange farm in South Africa. Um, I'll link websites for volunteering organizations um, down below as well. Same principle as what I mentioned about staying in a hostel for free. You offer your labor and in return you will receive bed and board bed and board. I'll link some um, well-known websites to volunteering and I suggest if that is an option that you want to take into consideration that you do a little more research on it yourself. Last safety and security tip, always let somebody know where you're gonna stay, where you're gonna be. At home, back home, your family, um, friends, whomever, tell them where you're gonna be, tell them when you're there, get out if you have a bad feeling. So people know where you are, who, uh, where you are, who you're staying with and um, just, you know, what's going on with you. Mm -hmm.